Alrighty people, welcome to one of these rolling vlogs of mine. Where I basically drive around and talk about shit. Today's topic is cameras. Probably saying, Adam, why are you talking about cameras? Like, what could you possibly tell us about cameras? Well, I was just in future shop dealing with, like I said, I was coming here to do the warranty work on my camera, find out more about it. When uh, I found out that uh, my camera's still in the in the uh, warranty work department, but that's not what this this video is about. This video is basically about cheaper 1080p cameras. Like for instance, I took advantage of the Black Friday sales. I bought that Panasonic 500, uh, the HCV 500K, and. The moment I made a video about it, I had a couple people tell me that the camera doesn't do true 1080p because the sensor's not big enough. Which in a way, is very damn true. The camera, the, the 500K only has a 1.5 megapixel sensor. Where the 100K, which is the cheapest model of that style camera, of the HC V series, um, it only has a 1.2 megapixel camera, or 1.3 megapixel sensor. So. If you're wondering, well, why isn't that enough to do HD? Well, think about it. If you want to do 1920 by 1000 by 1080, which that's how many pixels you want to produce. I'm not sure why people are stopping here, but I'm going to give her. Uh, if you want to do that kind of resolution, all you need to do is take a 1920 times it by 1080, and the number you get is 2.1 megapixels, give or take. So if your sensor and your camera is less than 2.1 megapixels, it can't properly produce 100, uh, 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high of a video. However, the camera will still create that video through its photo sensor and its imaging uh, processor. How does it do it? Well, it uses a bunch of techniques. Like, uh, I can't remember the actual, I, I don't know how to pronounce the word, but it's like interloping or something like that, interpolating or... Basically, it, it fills the gaps that are missed by the sensor through an algorithm built into the engine. And it does a pretty good job, like like the video you're seeing right now is filmed on a camera with a sensor that, that's shooting at 1080p, but it's only a 1.2 megapixel sensor. But it looks pretty damn clean. So the engine can do the job. Now this here does have the Digic 3 engine and the, uh, the lens is a uh, BSI lens from Canon, but it's only a 1.2 megapixel video sensor. That's it. So it's all in not what the camera, uh, like not, not the sensor and everything, but you can usually get pretty damn good high, uh, high quality videos, HD videos, out of a non HD camera that boasts HD quality. However, what do you expect if you're paying under $500 for a camcorder? You can't expect freaking Hollywood quality because then Hollywood would be using these little shitty cameras to make their videos, right? So, for YouTube, I honestly don't think going out and spending, you know, unless you're like a big studio producer and you're producing stuff like, I don't know, like some of the bigger guys are like Epic Mealtime, they try to produce TV-like quality shows, so they need the high quality cameras. If you're just having fun on YouTube, the $300 camera will cut it. It'll give you a nice, clean, crisp image. People will know what the hell you're aiming your, your camera at. And it's more than enough video for people to understand. Especially ever since YouTube changed their algorithm for processing videos. Now, if you're not editing on a Mac, your video ends up looking all grainy and shitty because they don't have the algorithm right. You have to basically process it for streaming and the only instructions they get for that are for iMovie. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm not ready to break bank on a MacBook just so I can have my videos upload that much quicker and cleaner. So it's kind of upsetting that in order to process a video correctly for YouTube, you have to set it up for media streaming. And the only way to do that is through iMovie or Final Cut Pro or Final Cut Express. They have no instructions for anybody using a PC. But anyway, I did my research on the cameras. I looked them all up. And anything under 700 bucks had a sensor too small to produce 1920. You guys looked at the Sony's, Panasonic's, Canon's, everything. Every friggin' camera out there just to see what I could find. And they all had the same thing. So there you go. That just right there proves the point that um, unless you're willing to break the bank on a camera and get a $1,000 camera, 
you're not going to be shooting true HD, but you are going to be shooting HD. You're going to be able to at least do 720p and have it look good. This guy probably thinks I'm following him, but I'm not. I'm just driving around aimlessly because I do that. So there you go. Honestly, I am not a fan of the Sony cameras myself, mainly because all my friends who use them, they all have the same problem in their video. The Sony cameras, autofocus is like it's on glue. It just goes everywhere and focuses on anything and it has no control whatsoever. I am not a big, big fan of that. I, however, do like my Panasonics, love Canon. Not a big fan of the JVCs because they take about a week to turn on, but they are pretty cheap starter cameras and they do an okay job of video. Audio falls flat, but you can fix that in post. So honestly, it's all in, in how much you want to spend and what you're doing pocket camera versus camcorder that'll probably be my next video which will also be my last video people because I have completed my 30-day challenge yesterday is day 29 29 people friggin rights one more video and I'm done so my next video will probably be pocket camera versus camcorder let the battle ensue so on that note if you like today's video give the like button a click if you're looking for a partnership with red light broadcasting check the description we got links down below that'll help you get that Remember to mention that Vlog and Life sent you for expedited service. And uh, the comment question of the day is, what kind of camera do you film with if you have a camera? And what do you like and what do you don't like about it? Leave it in the comment section. And until next time, people, keep on vlogging. Not only did they run the snow plows, they also ran the salt trucks. Now you're probably saying if you're not from up north or a place that gets snow and ice on the road, you're saying, Adam, what the frig's a salt truck? A salt truck is literally kind of like a fertilizer spreader that has a bucket on the back of it full of salt. And it drives up and down the street and shits salt everywhere to melt the ice and break it down so that you're back to raw pavement. So that when you come to an intersection and you apply your brakes, you don't slide through it and become part of somebody else's vehicle. That, my friends, is a salt truck. Now, the salt trucks are actually the reason why I don't drive that white Trans Am you saw a couple vlogs back during the winter. Because if I were to drive it, that salt would rip through the undercarriage. That's why up north here, we gotta do something for our cars called undercoating. I got mine done actually uh, in uh, September. My buddy, Angry Joe, he, he's got a buddy out in Sturgeon that uh, gives us great deals on shit like that. And I paid 50 bucks and he crowned my entire car. That's the brand name of the undercoating, by the way, people, crown undercoating. 50 bucks cash, brings it into a shop and just goops the bottom end with this like sticky, like, I don't know what it is. It's just some sort of like